Hey guys, welcome to another JavaScript challenge. And in this challenge, we're going to be looking for the second value and the way this is going to work. So we will going to have our function and we will going to be passing the array into the function. And our goal would be very simple. We would want to sort out a array as well as we would want to make sure that we're only are returning the unique values. So let's say if this array is being passed in our function, we would get only the unique values. So we would get rid of, let's say, number three here, since I can see that there's two of them, as well as I would create them in the ascending order. And that way I can check. OK, so minus or negative 11 would be the lowest one. And the second lowest would be number two, as well as second greatest would be 67 because 88 would be the greatest. And then these are the numbers that I'm returning. If the array would consist of three values, then I'm just going to be returning the middle one. If there's two values, again, we would still sort it out, but we would return the number one and number two. So both of the values. And then obviously, if there's only one value, we're just returning one value. All right. As always, if you have a better solution, feel free to post it in comments so we all can check it out. All right. Now let's start very simply by creating a variable. I'm going to call my variable values. And here I would like to get everything from array. However, I would only want to get the unique values. Now, there's many ways how we can do that, but probably the fastest one would be using the set data structure. And what I can do here is using the spread operator and create a new set. And then within a set, I'm just going to pass in the array. Uh, this will going to return only the unique values. So in this case, why don't we actually return here? We can just say values as well as we can sort it right away. So since this will be an array, I can just add sort method within the sort method. We do need to pass the callback function. So the callback function, we're going to take two parameters. And here I'm just going to say that I would want to return in the ascending order. So that would be a minus B. So that way, if B is bigger, the A will going to get a lower index, and that's how we're going to get the ascending order. So as you can see right now, for my last array, I'm having negative one, like I said, then we got rid of the three, and then we have two, three, seven, 67, and 88. Now I'm gonna, not going to go with these ones, obviously, because it's kind of self-explanatory what's happening. Now, last one, we're just going to be a bunch of if statements. We're all going to be checking for the length of the values. So why don't we do that? I will going to delete the return right now. And I'll say, all right, so if values, that is obviously my array, length is less than two, then I would want to return. And now I'm just going to use the template literal where I'm going to write, okay, so I would want to access, first of all, the values array and obviously the zero index, since in this case, I'm saying, all right, so if the value only consists of obviously one number, that would be my scenario. Then also I could use the else if, and in this case, I can say, all right, so else if, and then I'm looking for if the values length is equal to two. So if the length is equal to two, then I have obviously two of them. And in this case, again, we'll just can copy and paste that. That way we don't have to write as much. So values zero and values one. So why don't we actually copy and paste the second one as well, like so. And then once we grab these, then I can just return it, of course. And if I'm going to be able to do that, so this will return number one and number two, respectively, meaning zero index and also index number one. And last one will be when we were going to be dealing that if obviously the values are, let's say, bigger than three. Right, so if we have three values in the array or bigger, and that way we can say, All right, else. So within the else statement, we're just going to be again returning template literal, and we're going to start by accessing the number one, the index number one, because we're looking for the second one. And why don't we do that? We're going to say, All right, so again, dollar sign, we're accessing the variable values number one, and then I always, always need to check for the second greatest. And the way I can do that is I can look for the length and length minus two. Now, what is that going to mean that if obviously I would be getting the length, then that would be one index outside the array. 
then negative one would be the last one. So length minus one would be the last one. And length minus two would be always the second from the end. All right. Now, in this case, we can say, all right, so I'm going to be looking for values. And again, we're just going to use the dollar sign like so values. And then we're going to be and obviously this is not correct. I do need to write it like this. And let me delete that. This doesn't make sense. So values and then we're going to write. OK, so I have values array and I'm looking for values length and minus two. And this should return me one. Obviously, if the case is less than two, this is just going to return me zero one. Then in this case, it will return two and four. Then if the array consists of three numbers, then I'm just going to return the middle one. So 22 and 22. Or if I have obviously more than that, if I have all this long one, then I'm going to get a two and 67. So this is how I decided to solve this challenge.